Today, I'm actually going to teach you how to steal some things, if that's okay with you. Okay, I know that sounds crazy, so I'm going to back it up a little bit and build a metaphor. So today, we're talking about constellations. What is a constellation? Well, it's an amalgamation of stars and space debris, asteroids, things of that nature. And as we're looking up, we're applying interpretation to that. Whether you just like to connect the dots and see the shapes, or maybe you're using it to navigate and using it as a utility, in any case, we're interpreting that information. Now, what's really interesting about constellations to me is the starlight, the distance that it has to travel from the star to reach our eyes here on Earth. So as you're standing on Earth, looking up at the night sky, you're actually looking at a snapshot back in time. You're looking back in time. It's really interesting, and I think it's a really great metaphor for how we look at creative movements and creative figureheads throughout history and how we appreciate their legacy. Because for us, if we're creative and we're inspired by somebody, we know that good content is timeless. But I think it's weird that people go into museums or read something in a book or hear a song that they like see something hanging on the wall and think, that's beautiful, but that can't be touched. You can't edit that. You can't scrape that. Not only would you probably be thrown out of a museum, but you just can't actually do that metaphorically. Today, I want to push back on that and talk about why emulation is a good thing. So these days, it's really difficult to get on the computer or turn on the TV and escape this idea of emulation or you know, somebody stealing from somebody else. There are all kinds of news stories about copyright infringement, and we've got a bunch of examples. Brands like H&M or Forever 21, Zara, appropriating designs from upcoming artists, or even if you're into music, Marvin Gaye and his estate suing Robin Thicke and Pharrell over the Blurred Lines sample. And it's really weird because I think we've built a paradox here. As a consumer culture, we really want unique things. We want exciting, new, fresh ideas, but yet nothing is new. This is a quote that I really love. Good artists copy, but great artists steal by Pablo Picasso. Now, everybody in this room probably recognizes that name, and you can probably understand the importance of Picasso as a powerful creative person in our history. And many of you probably also believe that Picasso is extremely unique. So if we think about Picasso as this trailblazing artist, what is he saying about emulation? You might also be wondering, why do I care about this? Well, right now, I'm in my final semester at UC. I'm studying between the schools of DAP and CCM. So right now, every week, I'm being tasked at creating things, coming up with ideas, putting things down on paper. And whether I'm working by myself or working with any of the talented peers that I have to work with on these projects, the same problems still come up over and over again. We're assigned a project, there's a due date, and we're spending 90% of our time worrying about, what are we going to do? What are we going to make? We don't want to step on toes, we don't want to plagiarize, we don't want to copy. And it's really weird because we know how to do everything that we need to do. We know how to use the tools and the programs. We're seniors. We've been learning this for years. But we are so scared of stepping on toes or copying somebody's work. What I'm asking today, or what I'm suggesting today, is that we lean into emulation, that we lean into it as an inspirational tool, that we begin to collaborate based on emotional resonance. That way, we can get out of our own heads and start throwing paint at the wall see what sticks, just get our ideas out onto paper, because it's not doing the work that's hard, it's sitting down to actually do the work. There are some really great examples of emulation that are positive. One of my favorites is the song that came out in 1997 by an artist named Bjork. Now, if you know Bjork, she's an incredibly talented and trailblazing artist, but in 1997, she was still kind of coming up. And she released this song named Army of Me. Army of Me is this incredible combination of these pulsing acoustic drums and these abrasive, crazy digital synths and the soaring, light falsetto vocal that she became famous for. 
And it's just this really cool combination of the digital and analog coming together. But probably the coolest part about that song is that the drums of that song are completely part for part taken from a Led Zeppelin song that came out in 1971 called When the Levee Breaks. Now, when the song came out, nobody got online, barely could get online at that point, but nobody got in the papers and said, she needs to go to jail, she needs to pay back or take the song off her album. Nobody got mad because they were so blown away by her ability to absorb the emotionality of the original drums and recontextualize that band for a new generation. It was really, really cool. Even more interesting is the original song, When the Levee Breaks, by Led Zeppelin, was actually a complete copy and paste of an old folk song that came out in 1929. Yeah, pretty weird. There are plenty of other contemporary examples of this, too. If you think about Taylor Swift's new album, Look What You Made Me Do, she actually credits the songwriters of I'm Too Sexy For My Shirt as the writers of that song because she, she copied, essentially, the melody and the rhythm of that chorus for her new album. Kendrick Lamar, one of the most prolific rappers of our time, credits this indie ethereal pop band named Beach House on his 2011 album Good Kid Mad City. It's this combination of really soft, light, beautiful songwriting with West Coast hip hop that no one would probably ever think to put together, but it works really well and it was critically acclaimed. And probably a lot of people in the audience recognize this prayer hand imagery that became really pervasive in 2016 when Drake started using it as album promotion. That's actually a 16th century etching by an artist named Durer. So what are all of these artists doing? Is there a common thread that we can find here? I think that there is. First of all, I think that none of these artists are tasking themselves with reinventing the wheel. They're not searching in the dark for a new identity. They're not going crazy over trying to do the craziest new thing. What they are doing instead is going out into the world and feeling new fabrics and hearing new sounds and cultivating a broad range of inspiration and taking that back into the studio with them. They're letting the inspiration do the work for them. So in conclusion, I'd like to bring up a couple of points here. And I said that I was gonna build the metaphor with constellations, so I'm gonna tie that home. In the same way that we're looking at stars and appreciating the starlight as the legacy of something that burned out a long time ago, our ability to continue the conversation by emulating our favorite artists is an homage to their legacy. It's a way of saying thank you to them and continuing on a conversation for them. Because art is malleable. It's supposed to be edited and tweaked, and we need a community. Everybody needs to be involved working together. Art is not a spectator event. Everybody needs to be in the field playing together. If you're just starting out, or maybe you're an artist that it feels a little bit stuck right now, going through a creative block. Emulation can be a wonderful way of getting that voice out of your head and allowing you to just work freely. If you're just starting out emulation and learning how your favorite artists learned how to paint or learned how to make music, can teach you some tools and tricks that can get you started. And as you continue to mature, broadening your horizon and emulating other styles can start to build a unique identity. Soon your projects will be covered in unique fingerprints. And maybe someday, if you get really good at it, you'll make something worth stealing. Thank you. <laughs>